What is up, guys? I'm Celis Williams, aka the Swole Fester, here to educate you on health and social well being. This is episode five of Overcome. Right now, guys, on screen, you're going to see workout footage from this past weekend. So, you're going to see workout footage from Saturday, my lower body intensity day, and Sunday, my upper body intensity day. And then the raw footage for this video will be from yesterday, which was Tuesday, my volume focused lower body day. Anyway, while this is playing, I kind of just wanted to elaborate a little bit, guys, on what I meant in my last Overcome episode when I talked about how, like, you know, Derek and I are going to really be focusing on trying to, like, you know, build off of this next meet and when i said that guys i wasn't just being dramatic like oh we're gonna go into this meet then build to be even stronger like that is true but i literally mean we're going to build off of that meet by having a better baseline to build off of and that's pretty much what i want to kind of like explain to you guys so pretty much with my last meet as, as an example if you guys remember before my last meet if i had something like you know 385 pounds for a triple that would be like around rpe 8 to rpe 9 for me or if I had like 485 pounds on deadlifts for uh, a double, that would be like around RP8 or RP9. Well, after my meet, guys, I was hitting 385 for like pause triples on squats at like RP8 and 485 pounds for like pause doubles, like RP8, RP9 on the deadlift. So I went from what was hard for like, you know, regular sets and reps at a certain rep range with a certain load on the bar to being able to do that for pause at a lower or the same RP. And that's simply because my baseline of strength was bigger. Whenever you go into a powerlifting meet, guys, or whenever you just go through like, you know, a strength training block. And at the end, like, you know, if you, if you get stronger, like if you test your one rep max, your baseline is higher and that's something that you want to take advantage of like your base level of strength is now higher so you want to be able to build into that now what often happens with power lifters is that because of the way that they go about peaking which you know i'll probably be doing a video on at some point in the future if you know brennan doesn't beat me to it first is that they peak in a way where they're so beat up by the time they get to the meet and even if they perform well at the meet they feel so beat up and tired afterwards that they have to take like you know a lot of time off and it'll take like a full week off or a couple of weeks off from training and you don't want to do that mind you you don't want to just rush back into it and go like balls to the walls with heavy loads again but the way i like to go about it with my clients is i'll have them go in you know like let's say the meets on saturday then you know that following week i'll have them do like two active recovery workouts just to get like you know the bench and squat movement in there i probably won't have them worry about the deadlifts until the following week when we get back into training but two active recovery style workouts for the um post meet and then that following week we get right back into training and i don't when i say get back in training i don't mean just like a bunch of high volume bodybuilding style stuff where we're like you know every day is sets of like eights to tens we're still gonna have heavier days um but instead of those heavier days being maybe like sets of twos and threes maybe we have them like sets of fours and five for our intensity days our volume based days sets of like seven and eight then maybe for the tertiary day that like additional active recovery volume day like sets of like nine to ten just as an example and the reason you want to do this guys is because you want to take advantage of the new strength that you have you want to take advantage of those adaptations and be able to build your baseline even higher that way you know things that you were maybe doing for like hard sets of twos and threes now you're able to do that for sets of fours and fives with the same weight because your baseline is higher and that's essentially what i'm wanting to do with this meet i kind of started doing that like i said um this last meet after power fest but then due to all the different things like the concussion losing a bunch of weight and then recovering from that and then getting food poisoning losing weight again it just kind of threw that off now even though i've been able to like you know overcome <laughs> hence the series and <laughs> bounce back in the way um, that I've been able to, to where like, yeah, I'm out here, you know, working with loads, you know, further out from this meet than what I was for my last meet. The reality is, is that I still wasn't, haven't had a time to just properly like, you know, go into a meet, crush that meet PR, and then have a nice, strong, healthy off season building off of that. So that's what I really want to do with this upcoming meet. I want to go in there, hit these PRs. Like I said, they're not going to be like huge PRs um, from my last meet, but just nice solid PRs and then build off of that. So that way I can really like see what I'm capable of really push my potential guys. I know that I'm capable of squatting like in the low 500s. I know I'm capable of pulling in the 600s. I know that my bench is going to go beyond the 350s up to like, you know, the 360s, 370s, maybe even, you know, a few years down the line, actually bench 400, which would be awesome. But in order to do that, I need to be able to like stay healthy and build off of the baseline. So I just wanted to kind of explain what that means. I'll probably be doing a full-on like informative video going more in depth over this topic like i said when i cover the peaking and i'll talk about like you know building the baseline and etc from there but i just wanted to give you guys an idea of what i was talking about because i felt like i wasn't very clear in that last video but yeah that's pretty much all i want to talk to you about with this voiceover enjoy the rest of the video
All right, guys, so we're also moving really, really well right now. So on this day last week, I had a top set of five and three back down sets of five. My top set of five was with 360 pounds last week at an RP of six. So this time I have a top set of four and three back down sets of four, and the RP on the top set is still six, but it's a set of four instead of five. So it'll go down each week. But since I did 360 last week, I'm thinking 370 is probably gonna be the move for today. And to be honest, man, like it's weird. Even though it's the second day squatting, like the third workout of the week, I definitely feel more fatigued on this day than on my primary squad day which is the first day of the week but I also just feel more like acclimated used to the movement like I haven't had time away from the movement so it's like I'm able to groove it a little bit better able to stay in really good position and just have that good balance of stability and speed you guys can see that I'm really taking my time just wedging myself under the bar making sure it's nice and balanced on my back getting my rear delts set the way I want to so that way I can just be properly tensioned and properly brace the lift but anyway 370 top set of four let's go Alright guys, so that top set felt really, really good. It's crazy because, so basically if you guys noticed, my last rep on that set looks the way that my rep speeds usually are like from the beginning, like on my heavier day. It's like I said, I just feel so much more acclimated on this day. It's a lot easier for me to get into like that really nice upright position, get my back nice and tight. So my reps move a lot faster than usual. The thing is, as the reps continue, it gets harder to like stay in that upright position because one, fatigue, but then two, I'm naturally more kyphotic, so I naturally want to round more into the hole. The good thing is, even by the time I get to the rest where I'm doing that, I still know I can get like four or five more reps in that position because that's the position I'm actually naturally very strong and so the fact that my rest before that fourth one were moving so fast is just a really good feeling so right on the rp6 that i needed and i've also been uh one thing you guys may know is i also have my grip closer i used to have like my pinkies on the ring and now i've gradually like brought my grip in just because it allows me to get a tighter grip on the bar and just to really get my rear delts back against the bar and pack my last the way i want to so it's feeling really good anyway i got three back down sets of four with 10 percent less or 90 percent my top set so that's gonna be like 332 333 pounds so let's get to it Alright guys, back down sets went well enough. It felt really, really good. You guys can see by that last set, it's really hard for me to like really just fight to maintain that upright position, but I make sure that I'm constantly trying to do so. Like Brandon and I explained before when we were doing all those collabs together, based upon how you're built, your form is gonna look a little bit different than somebody else, but that doesn't mean we don't follow the same general guidelines, what's more biomechanically efficient. Because I'm more kyphotic, I can get away with being a little bit more rounded in the hole than what some others may be. And that may be like correct for me, right? Even though I'm not perfectly upright in the hole, that's going to be more correct for me than somebody who may be naturally more extended or have a naturally more neutral back so they can naturally be more right in the hole. It's all about trying to fight into those positions that are going to be best and strongest for you. It's kind of like the concept of on the deadlift, right? Everyone should pull the slack out of the bar, but once you do that, where your hips naturally set to where they won't shoot up may be higher or lower than someone else based upon your build. So it's pretty much the same concept, but that was the whole purpose of me doing all that high bar squatting before when I was in California was focusing on keeping my tight upper back and maintaining as much of a neutral lower back as I could into the hole. So it's definitely paying off. Anyway, next we've got sumo deadlifts for my deadlift variation today. Same thing, 
top set of four, then three back down sets of four with 90% of whatever my top set is for the RP6. Um, one thing I can say is that if you guys remember back when I was at Apple when I hit that 475 for two RP5 on conventional, I slammed the bar down pretty hard on the second rep because I was so hyped at how fast it moved. And it caused me to have like like either bruise or like I just made this part of my palm really tender. So it hasn't stopped me from deadlifting or squatting. It's kind of been a pain on bench because I wedged the bar so into my palm, but I've worked around it. But one thing it's caused me to do is actually grab the bar with more of my, my fingertips instead of just like my palm. And that's something I've always wanted to try to do anyway, but this has forced me to do it and it feels really good. It actually feels easier to get the slack out of the bar and to get into that position. And believe it or not, those couple of inches difference of getting a position because like you're technically starting a little bit higher up because you're grabbing with your fingers and not your palm actually makes a huge difference. But uh, yeah, let's see how these sumos go. So, post sumo spelt. Pretty good. Pretty dang good. Like, it's crazy. Ever since we reincorporated my sumo as like a variation for my secondary lower body days back in Cali, it's just been feeling so good. It's honestly the best my form has ever felt. Last week, last week I pulled 425 pounds for five reps at RP5, so it's a little bit undershot. So, instead of, you know, I, I figured, okay, let's try to bump it a little bit more this time for the set of four hit the RP6 for a set of four, and it still felt like RP5, so I'm really happy where Sumo's at right now. At this point, guys, like my Sumo's actually not, not that far behind my conventional. I may end up actually like in the off season working with it even more and seeing if it ends up passing it up. So I only ever stopped before because I was having those hip issues at the beginning of the year, but at this point, I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling healthy. But anyway, then I got these back down sets, and go home. to close this video out and there's really not much else to say man like today felt really good i've been feeling really good in general this is probably the best i've ever felt like you know a few weeks before me in terms of just like i feel good physically i feel great mentally i feel rested recovery's on point like the 9 to 11 hours of sleep at this point like i'm used to it and it just feels really good on some days i'm kind of like in a weird way like i'm tired of sleeping just because it's like like I said, I have to have like a very structured schedule in terms of what I do because I'm sleeping for so long. But for so you know, flexibility with my scheduling just due to the nature of what I do as far as coaching and YouTube, it's it's not that difficult. And I'm not complaining about it. It's just everyone's different. You know what I mean? Like some people, they may be like, man, I wish I could sleep that long. But me, I'm the type of person where I like to be like, you know, 
active and busy and just like I like to be doing something when I'm sleeping for so long I feel like dang like half my day is going to like literally doing nothing but it's all working out and it's I just feel really good right now but yeah that's pretty much it for the video hope you guys enjoyed it if you did go ahead and leave a comment down below let me know what you did if you're not leave a comment down below let me know what I can do better like the video share subscribe keep it simple specific scientific I'll catch y'all later